beautiful people, welcome back. You guys, welcome to today's video, and I am just in such a good mood, okay? Like, th this cannot be contained, because number one, we're testing out new makeup. I've got new Urban Decay, new Morphe, NYX, Clinique, the Huda Brow thing, the Mented. I have a bunch of new stuff in there, but I'm also really excited because the sun is, like, officially here. Like, I can feel it, and yes, when I go to film, I'll zoom the camera in. It's not, it's not gonna look like this the whole video, don't worry. But, like, just sitting here in these last couple of minutes, feeling the sun. Like, it is, it, this is good for, like, me, my personality, my disposition, my anxiety, my depression. It just feels so good to just, like, be in the presence of actual sunlight, and it's just, it's really doing wonders for me. And then, of course, number three, we can't ignore arguably the cutest thing that is existing, which is this t-shirt, you guys. It is tie-dye. It is everything. Sleeves are perfect. Cut is amazing. Super soft. It's from Torrid. And, of course, I will have it, along with everything else, linked down below. But of course, if you're new here and you haven't heard my spiel, I mean, and even if you've heard it, just, just stick with me, okay? It's charming. Uh, but please don't forget, also down in the description box, I will have linked my Instagram, and I would really, really appreciate it if you take a second, go follow me over there, because not only am I trying to hit 10,000 followers, but I also put up a ton of content. So there's everything in the feed from makeup, plus size fashion, styling tips. Anyways, that is my Instagram. You can check it out. I'll have it linked down below. Like I said, I would really appreciate it. And then here on YouTube, you can, of course, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. That way you don't miss any time I upload, which is typically three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. But you guys, I think that's pretty much it as far as the intro goes. So let's go ahead, zoom the camera in, figure out the sun situation, and let's get started. All right, so I think right here is a good place to start. I'll probably have to zoom it out as the sun moves past the window. But for right now, I think we're pretty good. Let's go ahead here and get my hair up out of my face. Yes, Miss Triceratops Queen. Ooh, bitch, looking good. Now, going into the makeup, by the way, I'm starting off with this primer. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Primer. It is a makeup gripping base and pore refining hydrator with all day grip technology. But if you are new to the channel um, and new to my makeup reviews, I just wanted to give you kind of a heads up as to how I do things because I know a lot of people, when they film reviews and whatnot, they go off camera for the steps that aren't new and then they come back to test out the products that are. But on this channel, we actually do things the complete opposite <laughs> of that because I started started noticing, and I, I, at first I thought it was just a me thing, like when you're watching a beauty video, how when they chunk out the sections that aren't new products, I feel like it just puts a weird flow to the video, like it makes it feel really segmented and it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't move as easily for me. And I asked you guys what you all thought, you know, do you prefer it that way? Would you prefer that I leave, you know, little sections of other products in even if they're not new? I would say that about 90% of people all agreed that uh, even if it's not new makeup that you would still just you know, rather see a little clip of it being applied. That way you get to see the flow. You get to see everything kind of as it builds. So for today's video, for example, I don't have anything new for the first several um, products, which by the way, I'm going in now with the NARS um, Soft Matte Complete Foundation. This is in Light to Mont Blanc. But obviously for today, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, just running through these first couple of products here that aren't new. And uh, God, that foundation looks gorgeous. I feel like this, oh, I just, oh my God, I just blinded myself so so bad. Oh, that was that was unbelievably bright in my cornea. Right now, by the way, I'm going in with this concealer. This is the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer um, in shade two. And I, I thought I had more of this in here. I didn't realize I was almost out. Also, is it really dark? right now or is it not? I can't tell. Guys, this lighting is messing with me so bad, but like I don't want to let it go. I just want to sit here and like, ha, ah, like I want I want to bask in the glory of the sunshine. It's from there, like I was saying, um, other products. Let's go in and set the under eyes and the T-zone down with some of the pure translucent setting powder. And this is actually uh, something I tested, what, maybe two weeks ago in a video where I tested out a bunch of new pure makeup, which I will link up here. There was like their new um, face palette. There was some new concealer situation. And uh, if you just want to see everything in action, you can obviously go check that video out. But I've actually been, just as a side note, I've been pretty impressed with this powder so far. It works really nicely when I'm going in with a lighter weight concealer, like this one, the new one from Wet n Wild, the Wet n Wild Incognito. That's a great concealer. And it works really, really well with both of those. All right, now from there, I actually do have a new product. This is from Morphe, and this is their Wonder Tint che Cheek and Lip Mousse. And I have it in the shade FYP and the shade Dream. So these have have a great texture as, as the name would suggest. They do have more of like a lightweight, um, moussey, moussey type feel. And I actually really like that. Very, um, 
very almost like a finishing powder but if it was a cream like it has that kind of a texture to it okay, so this one is interesting this is the shade dream right yeah dream and it's more of like an orange cream sickly kind of color which normally i would like colors like this to be more of like a pink coral like i'd, I'd want there to be a little bit more of a pink base to it um but this color i actually think would look really beautiful underneath of the powder blush that i'm going to be testing that's in the clinique face palette and so i think what i'll do maybe we'll just try like tapping a teeny bit of this on my cheeks just to see you know how it works with foundations powders and whatnot so i'm just going to take a little bit of it here a little bit higher okay so obviously i expected this to be on the lighter side when it comes to color because it is more of a light whip texture and it's part of that line with them like the, the morphe 2 line is more of like a natural-esque you know type situation but i feel like this color is like almost just disappearing into my cheek like you can barely see it when I sit one side against the other which actually I think that that makes a little bit of sense because putting this on top of a foundation like a full robust foundation like I am today it's gonna you know kind of settle into it and lose its um, what little bit of pigment it has but if I was putting this on top of like a skin tint or you know a BB cream or even just my natural skin I think that it would have a little bit more of like a cute cheeky presence so this is probably one of those instances where it was just just like not intended for this application um like as far as you know the base that i'm putting it on but i mean all things considered it still is pretty and i think looking at it on my hand versus on this full coverage foundation i definitely would prefer it in more of like a natural setting but now as far as the texture goes i actually want to mention um because i'm kind of impressed with the way that it feels and i like that as someone who's more combo leaning oily this kind of gives us an option that's not like a super hydrating cheek tint type deal because a lot of times when we're dealing with like cheek tints or liquid or clean cream blushes anything like that they do tend to be very hydrating and it's just kind of the nature of the beast but it's nice to have something like this that again if you're more combo leaning oily or oily something you could put on that wouldn't um that would still give you that flush without being overly hydrated and making you more oily than you naturally are um but so far that's actually really pretty i like it right now from here i am going to go ahead and set the rest of my face real quick with the chantikai uh blurring yeah this is their perfect blur blur finishing powder the one with the hummingbird on it and I don't know if this one is restocked yet I don't think it is but if I can find it anywhere of course I'll link it down below for you but do you see okay do you actually see the glory that is before you okay this skin huh. It is absolute perfection. Like, pores, bitch, who? I don't have pores. I've never seen her. Don't know her. Not her cousin. Get out of here. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so sexy. So good. So smooth. Huh. Okay, had to get that out of my system. Thank you, and good night. Also, for anybody keeping track, water. Mm -hmm. mm. Not just water, but it's all the way to here. I drank all that. I didn't, like, make anybody else drink it. I drank it. Mm -hmm, that's right. I did this. All right, now moving on from there, let's dive into the face palette next. This is the Clinique On The Glow for light to medium skin tone face palette. Okay, so this packaging, is it giving anybody else like mid-2000s vibe back when pink camo was like the thing? Because I'm getting all the vibes, but I actually, I, I don't hate it. It kind of has a warm place in my soul. Uh, but let's go ahead here, take a little look-see. Like we have bronzer, blush, highlight, and then I believe this is just like a stay matte powder. Yes, it is the stay matte sheer press powder. Then we have the up lighting, illuminating powder otherwise known as a highlighter under that we have get this okay for blush we have a blushing blush powder blush Mm hmm We have a blusher McBlusherson. Yes, please. Party of one. And then uh, right underneath of that, we have the True Bronze Pressed Powder Bronzer. Okay, we, we are very redundant on this packaging. Okay, so here are the four shades <laughs> swatched, which you can barely see because lighting. Um, but they look, uh, they look pretty good. The highlight is definitely more on the natural side of things, so keep that in mind. Like, it has a little sheen, but not too much. I'm really interested to see if that's going to be buildable. The blush is really, really pretty, and the bronzer is too. They both have, um, like, a shimmer to them so they're definitely you know that vibe it's not a matte bronzer it's more of an illuminating face palette and it is important to note that with this one both the bronzer and the blush have shimmer in them uh the bronzer is more of a light shimmer compared to the blush which is definitely more on like the illuminated side uh but they both look really pretty i'm gonna go in first here actually with the bronzer and uh take this on my morphe jh02 bronzer brush just a big old fluffy fella here okay so going in with this bronzer i'm noticing it does take a minute to build but I like the texture. It's very soft. The application of it color-wise is also very soft. And um, the shimmer of it is not overwhelming.
overbearing, which was my biggest concern. Because I've noticed whenever I use like a shimmery ask bronzer, one of two things happen. I either end up looking nice and sun-kissed and beautiful and it works great, or I end up looking like a member of the damn Cullen clan where I sparkle in the fucking sunlight and I look like a damn hot mess. And um, that's really not the vibe I'm going for in the hot 2021 season. And by the way, the texture of this is really good too. Like it's kind of buffing into my skin. It's not just laying on top of it, which I really like. Where is my blush brush? Oh, where is my blush brush? Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, oh, where is my blush brush? Anybody else know what song I'm just talking about? The, the hairbrush song from VeggieTales? Anybody else get that? <laughs> Okay, now from there I'm gonna go in with the blush right here and I'm taking that on a Refer or Refer 05 brush and I am just going to lightly tap this one on. Again, I'm gonna be a little bit more mindful with it because it is um, a shimmery blush. Ooh, that's really pretty color. I feel like on camera it's coming up really intense. Okay, so screw however this is coming across on camera because in real life this is gorgeous. Like the actual tone of it is stunning. I love that little bit of shimmer that's in it, which again, normally I'm kind of hit or miss with that but there's something about the combination of the texture of these powders and the shimmer that they added like it just buffs in so beautifully and I am just not mad at this like it's just it diffuses so effortlessly and you guys know me okay I'm an over blusher like I just want to I just really want to go after it and because I tend to just love adding blush and like just really di dipping back in 17 different times but with this one there's something so like beautifully natural about it that I don't want to touch it at all because it just looks so pretty and I don't want to wreck it but oh my god like do you see how beautiful as I keep touching it Paige put the put it down I can't be trusted. All right, now at this point, before I head into the brows, I do want to lightly shape out the face. So I'm gonna take some of my number seven Lift and Luminate crumbs, okay, that I've got left here, because uh, I desperately need to bust out a new one of these. And I am going to use this to lightly shape out the face. I'm not doing like anything super sculpted, but I just want it to be very lightly defined, just to give me back a little bit of my cheekbone. All right, guys, so I went ahead and zoomed the camera in nice and close, because we are gonna talk about this new brow pencil from Lomas Huda, and I am so next level pumped. I grabbed this in shade 5 medium brown and this is her micro shade brow pencil and let's ooh packaging is super cute Huda always has nice packaging I feel like it just has such a nice like riveted look to it we got a good oh oh that is a beefy stiff little spoolie you hear that Okay, so I'm a sucker for a good spoolie if you don't know and you haven't known oh my god I love a good little firm stiff little moment <laughs> I love a good firm still little moment. Paige, you dog. But seriously, this is a great, great spoolie. Uh, and then on the other end here, let's take a look at this little micro fine situation. Oh, it is so teeny tiny. Okay, so I know there's no way you guys can see this on camera, but like these are such little teeny tiny micro strokes. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Okay, All right, so I know we've talked about creaminess of brow pencils a lot on this channel. And this one has like the perfect consistency because it's not like super creamy to where you're just, you know, wah, and all the product is gone because it's just overly emollient, but it's also not so firm and so, like, stick-like that you feel like you're scraping it through your brows and taking off your actual, you know, skin, uh, which I like. I like I like this in-between kind of feeling. It makes it easy to, um, again, make the little hair strokes and actually blend it through the brows without it feeling super, like, stiff. Like, my brows still have movement. They're more natural, and I love that. Okay, so, so far, this side going gray. I love these little hair strokes that I'm getting right here. You guys see that? Like, I just filled in this whole section. It looks so good, so effortless. Oh, that's great, great, go, doing good. Okay, guys, listen. Hear that? That is a good spoolie. Oh, that's a good spoolie. All right, so next up, getting into the eyes, we have this little booby from Urban Decay. This is, of course, their new Wild West palette. I'm crazy about the packaging. I think it's gorgeous. And I actually really enjoy this color story. I like that it has more neutrals up top, has a little poppy fun section here. And then as you go toward the bottom, it does have like those deeper, more, more sultry tones. For me, this would definitely be like a very reachable, very wearable option. I was thinking for today, because with the Urban Decay, the palette portion, so many people have already done like looks and reviews and you know is it worth it is it not like there, there's already a ton of content surrounding that so what I'm kind of thinking is maybe I'll break up the content a little bit kind of spread the love and take the palette and maybe do like an eye look feature it in a reel post that on Instagram and then for today in this video I could actually use these shadow sticks which are also new from Urban Decay and because I haven't really seen a bunch of people talk about these and I am really oh the packaging matches my nails that's damn cute uh, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about these and I'm actually 
a really, really big fan of shadow sticks. Obviously, I bought, I bought three of them. So maybe that's what we should do today. Let's go ahead and swatch them and see. Like I said, I picked up three shades. So no matter what, we should have something to work with. Ooh, this is gorgeous. This is the shadow stick in the shade Freak. Let's do a little... Ooh, I love lime green, you guys. That is so... Oh, that's so gorgeous. Don't, don't mind, don't mind the little Huda brush strokes that are right there, but God, that is gorgeous. All right, so next up we have the shade LSD, which is this really beautiful royal blue, but it's like a sparkly royal blue that's set in more of like a deep toned black base. All right, so the last one we have here, oh, that is gorgeous. It's almost got like a, like a gray pewtery kind of shift to it. Oh my God, that one might be my favorite. I mean, I love the lime green one for that pop, but like there's something about that little undertone that this one has. This is the shade Digitalized. Did I say that? I don't know, but it is absolutely gorgeous. <gasps> As like a liner, can you imagine doing it like right along the lash line and smudging it out? Oh my God, this would be so gorgeous as a lash line. All right, guys, so now I've got myself in quite the little pickle because I, at first, was just gonna use the shadow shades. They're gorgeous. I'm like, it's easy. The decision has been made. And then I thought to myself, like, I have to at least swatch the palette, right? I need, I need to, you know, think about it, see what I could do. And so then I swatched them, and now I'm stuck because I absolutely love these tones. Like, I think they're so gorgeous. I love the pairing of, like, the undertones of these blues, the light blue right here, and then pairing that with these neutrals. Oh, my God, they're just so gorgeous. All right, so if I wasn't going for a more natural, esque look. I'm just going to tell you guys right now, I would already have this blue and this blue all up on my eyes. I'd have this gold kind of fading into it, and it would be a, such a beautiful, beautiful-ass moment. Uh, but for today's look, I really want to go a different route. I, like I said before, I want it to be more natural, and I really want to utilize those shadow sticks so I can get a feel for the creaminess, the formula, and just kind of give a little more info on that because there's already a ton on this, and I really, just like I said, I haven't seen much on those. So I think what I want to do is actually, um, out of the palette here, here, I am going to take this shade, Cowboy Rick, which is a beautiful, um, like, silvery kind of shade. It has a nice little uh, punch to it, and I want to put that all over the lid and then kind of blend it. I did a little mock-up right here with that graphite shade because I really like the idea of having this more, like, grungy vibe along just the lash line and then blending it up into this, like, nice sparkly moment. Like, I, I think it'll give me just enough presence, but not too much. Like, it'll be kind of right on that cusp, and I like it because it's an option that I can use that is still on, like, the more natural-esque side of things, like it's quick and easy, but it's not just a neutral eye, brown through the crease, you know, like a shimmer all over the lid kind of thing. All right, so I'm starting this off, just as I said before, very straightforward look, just deepening up this entire lash line and kind of giving it like a light little flick up. I don't want it to be like a wing by any means, but I just want to give like that light little lift. And I'm just taking that little brush that the palette came with and lightly kind of blending out the edge just so that way we don't have any harshness. Like, I don't want it to look, you know, obviously like a line. I want it to blend up into the shimmer. So I'm just going to take that same brush here and kind of dip it onto the top of the shadow stick and lightly kind of blend and pack that on. And then from there, just with my finger, I'm lightly applying the shade Cowboy Rick onto the mobile lid, just kind of lightly blending and tapping right over top. And then I'm going to take the other side of that brush and kind of diffuse it up here. Again, no harsh lines. I just want to make sure everything is good and blended. And then just going back in with some of the shadow stick on this uh, brush and just lightly kind of packing it on. I don't know if this is just a me thing or what, but I'm like really impressed with the way that um, this shadow stick is blending because I didn't put down like a primer or anything. And so there's literally no slip or, you know, any sort of like movement beneath it. And it is blending seamlessly in with that shadow. And I find a lot of times, and maybe it's just because my eyelids are a little bit more inhospitable, but a lot of times for me, shadow sticks tend to get like kind of bunchy or they want to like repel um, other products. Like in this case, you know, this glitter shade. I'm finding with this one that that's not the case at all. Like it just very, very lightly kind of taps on. It doesn't cause any issues. There's no, again, patching, no pilling. The glitter's not falling out. And the two together just work really, really nicely. I'm actually going to go ahead here too and take some of that shadow stick and just run that lightly on the lower lash line as well. All right, so in the future, I cannot wait to test out both of these shades to see if they perform as good as this one because this shade works so well. Obviously, I got it on both eyes. I even threw it in the waterline just for like a little extra sass. And I love this. The color, tone, texture, the way that it blends, the way that it actually paired so beautifully with that powder. And it is working surprisingly well. Okay, so now that I have all the powder dusted off, 
off my face here. Let's go ahead and set the face. We're gonna actually do our first round of setting spray uh, before we go in with highlighter. And for that, I'm gonna use the Benefit Pore Professional Super Setter, um, which they sent to me. I tested this out in another video testing new makeup. I'll link it up here. All right, now next up for highlight, I'm just gonna go back into the Clinique palette here and we're gonna try this highlighter, which I'm not really sure if it's gonna be too dark for me because it did cast a little bit deep when I uh, swatched it on my hand but I just wanna see how it looks. Let's start off here with the um, the actual like highlighty aspect of it because it is more of a soft glow, which I know I mentioned that when I swatched it, that it just had a lot more of like a soft kind of appearance, which I think that's just a personal preference thing. I mean, for me, do I reach for highlights like this often? No, but I think as far as putting one in a face palette, this is definitely a good place to start because it's kind of the middle of the road. Like it's not, you know, super light, very natural, but it's also not over the top beaming and it is on the workable buildable side. So I think that this um, this level of highlight, this intensity, would fit for a lot of different people, which is nice. And uh, as far as the actual color goes, it's not bad. It is a little bit too deep for me, but I can make it work, I think. Like, it, do it doesn't look awful. It's just giving me a very light cast, like right up in this region right here, which again, I can work with that. I can add another highlight. And then just to brighten it up a little bit, just near the tippy tops of my cheeks here, I'm going to go in with this Dior face palette. And I'm actually going to take this white shade right here. And I am very lightly going to kind of pinpoint that shade right at the very top, just ever so gently kind of pull the excess down. And that'll just help kind of counter that cast very, very lightly. It's not going to take a ton of product at all because this Dior highlight is intense. It's actually one of my favorite highlights because it is super workable and I can pair it with a lot of other formulas. All right, now from there, one last time, I'm going to spray my face with the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. All right, so next up, I'm just going in here with the Benefit Their Real Magnet Mascara, and they sent this over, I want to say maybe a week or two ago. I've been testing it out ever since, and it's actually a pretty good mascara. It does a nice job really lengthening your lashes. All right, so now moving on to lips, I'm actually really excited because I picked up these uh, new ones from Mented. I have their lip pencils and their lip glosses. I have two glosses, three pencils, and I thought we would kind of go through and uh, just find a cute little combo here. Oh, wow, these are so freaking crazy creamy, you guys. Is that not me? Oh, I am obsessed. This is their lip liner in the shade. What shade is this? Lala? Oh my god, that is damn gorgeous. Okay. Ooh, this one's slightly warmer with less pink in it. This is the shade Nude. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys, I'm like falling in love, okay? The texture of these is fucking stunning. Stunning. Okay, so the last shade that I have here is the shade Dope, and you guys, this little arrangement of colors is just doing something for my heart and soul. Like, I am a nude brown lip-loving lady, and these three options are so good, but they're all so different and so gorgeous, and I am, oh my god, <laughs> I am so excited. Which one do I want to use? Hold on, I gotta do, we gotta do a little investigation here. I kind of want to go with the second one. I feel like it's a really good in-between. It has a little warmth, but not too much. That's the shade, what is this, Nude? I'm just gonna take and throw on a little bit of that. Look at that. Look at how creamy that is. Oh my God, it feels so nice. All right, so for glosses, I have one of each here. I have a pink shade and a nude brown, which I'll probably probably go with the nude brown because I think the pink would be just a, just a little bit off. Uh, but I still want to go ahead and swatch them here really quick. All right, so I went ahead and I swatched both of them right there. The brown one is in the shade Send Nudes, and the pink one is in Number One Crayon, which is actually really pretty. So I'm going to go in, like I said before here, with the nude brown. Oh, wow, that feels good. It has a nice smell to it, too. Has like a like a little bit of like a vanilla cupcake -y situation going on. Oh, I love a good vanilla cupcake. But all right, you guys, with the lips done, obviously this is the full face, and I really, really love this makeup. I think it has kind of like a nice in-between of being more soft and natural on the face, but also at the same time, it has a good amount of coverage. It has this really fun kind of glammy eye that was like super easy, but has like a little bit of sparkle to it, and I just really love it. Like the, this is a very everyday look for me, just kind of as I would go into the world. And I'm gonna go ahead too and put up the up close that way you guys can obviously take a better look at it. But for me, as far as the products performed, I really don't have anything to say. Everything from the Urban Decay shadows, those shadow sticks, those per performed beautifully. The Huda Beauty brow pencil worked amazing. I have no issues there. The lip products for Mented are really nice. I will say my only thing with the gloss is I wish it had a little bit more of that juice factor to it. Like it has more of a thin consistency, so it doesn't give me all of that, you know, that wet look on the lips. Uh, but other than that, it is a really nice gloss. I love the color. I love 
love the lip liner too. Super duper creamy, no issues there. Now for me, the Clinique palette was kind of a wild card because um, I think overall it performed really nicely. I didn't have an issue with the texture, like the bronzer, the blush, they worked really nicely. The, the highlight for me isn't my favorite. It does have just a touch more chalk to it than I would like, like just a little bit of heaviness in that, which I do have a lot of like facial texture, so that's not super uncommon for me. But the thing about this that kind of has me a little bit apprehensive is the fact that I grabbed the palette that's actually geared for light to medium skin tones, and I'm someone that's pretty, pretty, pretty much damn near like see-through white pasty, and I had to build up this bronzer a fair amount on my skin to get it to like actually be seen. So my caution for this one, I guess, would be if you're more toward like the medium end of light to medium, I don't know if this bronzer is going to be too light for you, or maybe it would just take too much building, I'm not sure. But for my overall experience as, you know, again, see-through see pasty here, it's, it's Casper the Little Friendly Ghost, um, I think that it went pretty well, but I just, again, would caution you if you are on the, the medium side of the spectrum for it, just be, be mindful that the bronzer might take a little while to work with. All right, you guys, it is officially time for you all to sound off in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts on the video, the makeup look, the makeup we tested. Is there stuff here that you want to test out that you've already been testing? Um, just make sure that you leave me all of your thoughts and opinions down below. Of course, like I said at the start of the video, I will have all of the makeup, the products used, everything that I'm wearing, um, all of that will be linked down below. And I will also have my Instagram there if you want to check that out. Like I said before, I would really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to, you can subscribe and turn on your post notifications if you haven't done that yet. But um, other than that, you guys, I think that's everything. Thank you all so, so much again for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you had fun. Of course, above all else, as per usual here, I hope you all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see in the next one. Bye. I have something in my eye. I have something in my eye. I have something, something, something in my eye. What, 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 what did you say? I don't know what you said. Mm, what you only meant well. But other than that, you guys, it is a fit. Okay. I know you've been sitting out there for so long. Okay, hold on. We gotta love on the chickens. Okay. Mama, hers demands it. Her miss her sissy, mama. Her miss her sissy. Oh, her ones are- Ow! Oh my god, you got a hard head!